we are just about to find parking when we had five cops pull us over. We had two cars pull up in front of us, two cars behind us, and one next to us. So I thought I'd save that for, uh, I saved the best for last because I know you guys mentioned three trips. At the beginning of 2020, my husband and I started to have this dream of eventually living in an RV and uh, just traveling, just road tripping and working out, off of our laptops and stuff like that. So we were pretty fortunate to have done that right before everything shut down. So March 2020, we actually took an RV road trip from Virginia all the way down to Florida for a podcast conference. And that was a fun trip, being able to drive the East Coast and see the difference between the West Coast and the East Coast, which is vastly different, everyone, <laughs> in case you've never checked out both of the coasts. I, I think the, the coasts are so, 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 so different. And I think they're both worth exploring and driving up and down. So once everything shut down, my husband and I, just like with many of us, we had to stay at home, weren't commuting as much and started to have cabin fever, being stuck at home, not having anywhere to go. And I start to drive a little crazy. And if it wasn't for therapy, I think I, I don't know who I'd be today. I'm just saying, thank goodness for therapy, highly recommend it for everyone. So in December, we've been stuck at home now for months from March till December. How many months is that? Like eight, nine months at this point. And December happens to be my birthday month. And I just thought, hey, let's get out of the house. Let's go do something. We decided to do an RV road trip again. We went on this website, outdoorsy.com. And it's a, it's a great website. I don't get paid to talk about it, but it's basically like the Airbnb for RVs in case anyone's looking to rent an RV. And we found this RV that would have allowed us to go for a certain length of miles. Once we got the RV and we knew the length, we started to figure out, okay, where can we go from Virginia to wherever before we have to turn around and make sure we don't go over the amount of miles we were allotted this RV. We were looking at the map and we're like, let's just, let's just go all the way out to Nashville, Tennessee. Why not? Like that seems like a good enough distance from, you know, Virginia to Nashville. So we ended up road tripping Virginia to Nashville. And when we arrived, we actually arrived on Christmas Eve, pretty late at night, I believe around 11 PM. And we happened to have found parking right behind the Nissan stadium, which is in downtown Nashville, right there on the Cumberland river and across the street, across from the John Sagenthaler pedestrian bridge. So we decided to park there for the night and we thought in the morning, oh, we're going to go drive around. In fact, we actually drove a little bit through downtown Nashville for a little bit. One street in particular we decided to go on was First Avenue, which you'll later find out was actually the place of, <laughs> of the bombing. But I remember on Christmas morning, we woke up to the RV shaking and we feel a bomb go off. At first, you're, you're not thinking it's a bomb. And so I'm looking outside. And the first thing I see across the Cumberland River is, is smoke. You see smoke coming out and you don't know where it's coming from yet. You just see this black smoke just coming out from the buildings. And you start seeing all these police cars just driving within like 10, 15 minutes. You see like 20 cars going over the bridge. And we decided that we wanted to check it out because I mean, I think every natural human being would be like, what was that sound? Let's go check it out, right? Like, I think that's just a natural human nature thing to do. We decided to drive around the Nissan Stadium. We're still on the side where the bombing didn't happen. We're just, we're just kind of on the side of Nissan Stadium. And it looked like literally the street that we drove the night before, all the buildings, the windows shattered, the buildings destroyed, water pipes just shooting out in the air. You start to see the fire trucks and the cops trying to block off the roads. And we're here on the other side, just watching this all happen and, and not knowing exactly what's going on. But then my husband's mom, for whatever reason, even though she's in Ohio, calls us. She calls us within, I think, half an hour of all this happening. And she says, hey, I heard there's a bombing in Nashville. And, and mind you, this is like within the 30 minutes. We're like, what? how is she awake right now, first and foremost? Because this was happening at like 7 a.m. in the morning. And how did she know to tune in to Nashville? She had mentioned to us that I heard there was a bombing that took place in an RV. And we're like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, we're actually here at the scene right now. We're across the river watching this take place, seeing this fire, the firefighters and the police handling what's going on on the other side. Then when we heard the, when we heard that information, we're like, oh, okay, that was an RV. People are probably thinking about our RV now. 
they're probably thinking that maybe every other RV might be a suspect. We didn't actually process that at the time. We're still trying to gather everything that's going on. And it was all very sudden. My husband and I agreed, like, maybe we should make the most out of this. Like, cause I said to him like, oh my gosh, they're going to shut down the roads. We're not going to be able to go sightseeing the way that we wanted to. We wanted to be able to drive around downtown and see Nashville. This is our first time here. But let's try it anyway. Let, let's see, despite the craziness that's going on, and apparently this was on the news all over, despite that, we didn't know because we were there in the moment other than what his, what his mom told us. We're like, what? let's go sightseeing anyway. So we start driving around and we end up going to the Bicentennial Capitol Mall State Park, which is not too far from downtown Nashville. And we are just about to find parking when we had five cops pull us over. We had two cars pull up in front of us, two cars behind us, and one next to us. My husband is literally about to jump on a call to, to catch up with his family on Christmas morning. So these cops pull up and we're just like, honey, we got some cops <laughs> here. The cops come up to us and they look at us and they sort of peek inside and they're like, hey, we got a tip from someone that this RV was driving around and they were worried that you could have been a bomber as well. We're looking at them and they're looking at us and the cop was like, but I don't think anyone would blow up a fancy RV like this. So it was one of those, I think Mercedes camper vans, like super fancy ones. And we're just like, I don't know what to say. I, I mean, yay on that person who decided to mark us as a suspect, but we got a dog. We're about to talk to family. I, I don't know what to say. Fortunately, we ended up having a good conversation with these cops and they were laughing about it. And eventually all five of them drove away. But at that point, we were like, okay, we cannot go sightseeing here anymore. So as much as we wanted to spend the day in Nashville, Tennessee, we're like, yeah, I, I think if we stay much longer, we're probably going to be a suspect again. We're probably going to get pulled over again. So let's get out of here. I mean, luckily, one thing I always am grateful for is my husband. I feel like he's a good shield for these like situations. So I definitely have to give a shout out to him. But in that moment, I had all these feelings rushing through my head. I thought, okay, what did we do wrong? Did we make a wrong turn? I was just afraid. I just thought I was going to be in trouble. I, I was like, do, do I have my paperwork on me? Like, where is my paperwork? You know, like all these feelings of like, am I going to get arrested? Like, are they going to question us, detain us just because like we're an RV too? Fortunately, the, the cops were really good people. They were really kind to us and they kind of laughed about the situation. So all I could say is thank goodness. And the sheriffs were just, they were just doing their job and we appreciated them for that.